And now, a message from Oswald A. Bates, attorney at law. Are you a penal implant? Regurgitating behind bars while your ex mammary is pollinating every Scotarian in town? Were you arrested under false circumcisions and reincarnated against your will? In seaman's terms, are you in jail? Then let the orifices of Oswald Bates silicomize your intrinsical needs. Uh, my name Tiny. I was stabbed in the shower by inmate number 4356783. Uh, that's public to us. And Oswald got me conjugal visits with a girl with big breasts and a, a pack of Winston. Thank you, Oswald. You too can share in this infectious intermonitis. Don't constipate. Simply wipe to the front and call. 1810 Law Sucks. Yeah, thanks to us, Law Base. I got three more years in prison. Yeah, thanks a lot, Oswald. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Unfortunately, we cannot impregnate everybody. That's beyond our canonic threshold. The law offices of Oswald Bates. Call 1810 Law Sucks. Another one of those funky, funny, more money shows. A cast for laughs, but talent to pros and sisters with twisters for you to look and listen. It seems you don't believe, so you believe, but I can bitch you. So put it to your short and thought, we'll make it snappy. With jokes and folks and folks to keep you happy. No need to hold your remote control. Chill. This show got soul. All aboard, all aboard. The train up a chuckle. You better snuggle up, couple up, or the double up, double, yeah. It's hard to believe, but some of the best things in life are free. So fellas, grab your girl. Tell her that you love her, cause that's the way you're living when you're living, 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 color. Hey, down here. Detective Head in his first international adventure. Head, your assignment is to retrieve a tiny microchip which contains the plans to a deadly doomsday device from this woman. Wow, is that pussy galore? No, it's a lesser operative. Kitty Litter. Great picture from Faces International. Now, she has the microchip somewhere on her person. Anyway, let's move on to my favorite part, the gadgets. This is Head's new robotic body, which will be operated by you with that remote. Wow, just like Super Mario. Oh. <laughs> Good show! Yes, it also has a fully functioning anatomy, which you operate with the other toggle switch. That's what they mean by joystick. <laughs> hey, what about this? I mean, is this uh, like a blender that doubles for a flamethrower or something? No, that's an actual blender. We were having milkshakes earlier. You care for one? Sure. Remember, gentlemen, the fate of the free world depends upon you. Cheers. Hey, give me some. There's Kitty Litter now. Look, this is going to be really dangerous. You better let me go over there and pry that information out of that beautiful woman. No way. All right, suit yourself. You've got the prettiest smile I've ever seen. Why, thank you. White teeth are very important to me. May I wet them for you? With a drink, I mean. Certainly. Okay, let me see how this thing works. Uh, to the right. Ooh, ooh. Sorry. 
sorry, Ed, but all the instructions are in Japanese. I'm terribly sorry. No, I... I liked it. Well, then, would you care to dance? Maybe I could bruise your shins or something. Oh, my, you seem a little stiff. Does it show? Partner, loosen up on the throttle a little. Well, Roger, your head out. Just, uh... Too loose, too loose. You're dancing like shop and do. Wow, you really cook. I bet you get even hotter in bed. I bet you're like a machine. Let's move in for the kill. Good idea, head. Now, while you kiss her, I'll go for the microchip. Go. <laughs> Listen, that's really nice, but you can stop kissing me now. I would like to, but my body has a mind of its own. Uh, the controls are jammed. Not with me. Idiot. Look what you've done. You've knocked the cap off my tooth. The, the microchip, it's in her tooth, Head. You're right. The chip must be in her cap. How did you know about the chip? You must be a spy. Yes. <clears throat> and now I must be going. Ted, where's the microchip? I swallowed it. I need a Dick Gregory animal, man. Future, the free world hangs in my bowels. <laughs> I gotta get you out of here before those goons get here. What are we gonna do? You know what to do. Remember when you played for the Mets? You hit a 3-1 home and it clinched a pennant. Head, this is no time to reminisce. You know what I'm talking about, buddy. Hit me out of here. Knock me out of the park. You can't. Too dangerous. Didn't do it for the boy who was dying in the hospital bed. Not dying boy in the hospital bed. I don't know. Just do it. Call it out. <laughs> okay, partner, you're the man. You can do it. Just give me your best shot. I want you to hit me like Rodney King. <laughs> This has been another episode of The Hex Detective. And now, back to the continuing adventures of that incredible African-American daredevil, Super Clyde. Good evening and welcome. Last week on the show, Super Clyde faced his most difficult challenge ever. He drove his Hyundai on a high-speed chase through the streets of Los Angeles without a camcorder. <laughs> Tonight, we're backstage on Amateur Night at the Apollo Theater in Harlem. Champ, what are you going to do this time? Well, Jim, this is the most death-defying feat I've ever attempted. I'm going to try to do stand-up comedy in front of this Apollo Amateur Night audience. Super Clyde, what's so dangerous about that? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm just not that funny. Oh, that is dangerous. Has anyone else attempted this besides yourself? Well, Sinbad, Joe Torrey, and a few others, but no one using the type of material that I'm going to attempt tonight. <laughs> well, good luck, Super Clyde. Or should I say, break a leg. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. And now, will you please welcome to the stage the comedy stylings of Super Clyde. Hello, thank you. You know, it's good to be here. Let's see what's going on. Oh, I'm dating a white woman now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, because a white woman knows how to treat a brother. Black women are always tripping, right? <laughs> Brothers know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Quick joke. What's black and brown and looks good on a black man? A dopamine pincher. <laughs> thank you, thank you. How do you stop a black man from robbing you? Throw him a basketball. <laughs> thank you. Starting to get a little scary out there for Super Clyde. Let's see if he can get out of it. And you know what I don't understand? Why do the police punish black people by putting them in jail? Man, that just puts them closer to their friends and relatives, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, that's not punishment. That's a house party, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you got me. Uh, but seriously, folks, I do think that what we need now is a, a black man in the White House. I mean, who else is going to drive the president around in the limo? <laughs> Super Clyde, are you okay? Yeah, Jim, I'm fine. It was just a massive blow to the head. That's all. No big deal. 
That's one of the most amazing displays of bravery I have ever seen. What can we expect from you next, Super Clyde? Well, on next week's show, I will attempt to walk into a bar mitzvah dressed as Louis Farrakhan. Whoa, sounds challenging. That's our show for today. Join us next time with Super Clyde. your obligatory host. Now let's meet our new bachelorette. Please welcome Miss Wanda Wayne. Holy crap! Hey, hey Wanda, how y'all doing? Lakita, I told y'all I was gonna be on TV, girl. So, Wanda, tell us about yourself. Oh, okay then, for real though. Uh, first of all, I won uh, Miss uh, Miss High Pro Glow three years in a row. Mm -hmm. Then I won uh, Miss Swap Me for two years, and then and then I was like a second runner up in Miss Compton. But it was some political stuff going on of some about some some hair weave spray had had came up missing. But you know, I got my own natural blonde hair. I don't need nobody. Else <laughs> That's hair. very nice, Wanda. Very nice indeed. Now let's meet our bachelors. Bachelor number one. Bachelor number two. And bachelor number three. Wanda, number three is my lucky number. I hope it's yours too, girl, because I believe we could have a lot of fun together. Ain't nobody asked you nothing. <laughs> you sound like you bourgeois anyway. Ooh, I can see my breath in here. <laughs> well, Wanda, if you're ready, go ahead, take a seat. Anyway, uh... First question, Wanda. All right. Uh, hey, uh, word up. Uh, bachelor number one. Okay, this is a security. Uh, I got a piece of popcorn stuck in the back of my teeth. How would you get it out? Well, Wanda, I probably wouldn't even get it out. What I'd do is I'd probably put some butter on my tongue and just work it on in there with the rest of that popcorn. trying to get nasty over there, ain't you? But that, you know, you need to do something else, like take me out to eat or something like that, before you can get in my stuff. And, uh, okay. Wanda? Yes? I don't know about the popcorn, but this lipstick is really bothering me. <laughs> you are right for a white man. Okay, uh, bachelor number two, same question, only instead of popcorn, it's a piece of pig feet in my back mode. How would you get it out? Well, Wanda, I'd just add a little hot sauce to set your mouth on fire. Hey. And then I'd put my lips around yours. Word up. And I would suck until your forehead caved the hell in. I like it, word up. I like it, though. I like it, though. But can I go get in now? I ain't had my forehead caved in in a long time. Not since that LL Cool J concert. Let's move on to number three, Wanda. Okay, now, uh, now best look, number three. It's our first day, and we in our apartment and stuff, and I got on some sexy lingerie and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and so you can, it's real, like, revealing and stuff. You can see, like, the centrifugalness of my body. Now, how would you turn me on? Well, Wanda, I'd probably take you in my arms as I whispered some poetry in your ear in poetry. old Latin. While we gazed at some sculptures or paintings or what maybe watched some sculpt public television. That's see? how I turn you on. The only thing going to get turned on is the light so you can see how to get your ass out of my apartment. Whoa. Anyway, 
anyway, uh, Vassal number one. Vassal number one, and this is your question. Now, if I had a tattoo of the United States all over my body, which area of the country would you go visit? I'm going to Europe. Vassal number one, what's wrong with you? You can't get your tongue? Well, good looking. I'd probably start at the mouth of the Mississippi River and ride it all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, girl. <laughs> okay, uh, now, bachelor number two, what part of the country would you hang out in? Well, Wanda, first I would go to the peak of the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> then I'd loosen up that sun belt. Go with your bad self. <laughs> then I'd make a run for the border. Give me a chicken taquita. That's what I said. Okay, uh, well, time's up, Wanda. That's the funny sound. Okay, now you have a big decision to make. Will it be bachelor number one, bachelor number two, or bachelor number three? Okay, uh, shoot, I can only pick one, huh? Make a decision, Wanda. Okay, uh, I choose number two. Okay! What a lucky guy. Now let's meet the bachelors you didn't pick. Wanda, bachelor number one, Derek Clinton. What's up, man? Hey, what's up? Now say hello to bachelor number three, Steve Big Bun. Bachelor, you did pick. Here's Bachelor number two, Lucky Paul Nelson. need to throw your ugly ass back. What you say? I know you're not tripping. No, no, he I said... I know not tripping. No, he said there's no way I'm turning back. Oh, okay, then, hey. Hey, man, is there something in the rule book that says forget about the whole thing if we're not compatible? Because, no, come I on, man. No, I got the rule book right here. The you rule do? book says, chapter 7, point 4, section 8, it says, I got you, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> That's what it says. Look, I'm not the one you wanted, I'm sure, uh, because no, number one was, he no, was... No, you are the one boy. I wanted. You just want to talk about, you were going to suck the pig feet out my mouth. Get the pig feet right here. She's got the pig feet. <laughs> and you said you was going to, like, use hot sauce and stuff. I got the hot sauce. Oh, you got it. Wow. What's wrong with you? Oh, uh, there got my heart again. My heart? Your there got my heart again. Yeah, I got this heart condition. It no, always gets me, so I know I got no, to get it. I got your car again. <laughs> If you can get this man drunk enough, you two are going to be spending a wonderful, beautiful week in sunny Hawaii. Oh, I, oh good, because I get to wear my new string bikini that I have. Oh, oh, here it is. I get to wear my new string bikini. Oh, see? Head between your legs. Head between your legs. <coughs> so, you all right? Because, see, I'm just going to be the beauty on the beach. Beauty and the beast. Oh, you so crazy. You ain't no bees. <laughs> you two are like you're married already or something. Another happy couple, ladies and gentlemen. Curtis, Susie, come on out here and join us, will you? Oh, God, no. I'm going to rock your brain. <laughs> well, it's time to give our dating game goodbye kiss, kids. Um, it's about that time. Uh, this is the end of our season. We had a, a great year. We thank you all for watching. 
It's a very bittersweet moment here on Living Color. We want to say goodbye to one of our cast members, Damon Wayans, on his way to a superstar movie career. We had, we had great times, and we wish, of course, we wish him the best. And uh, come back and visit sometime. Love you.